welcome, welcome. And uh, we are onto a new book, the Book of Numbers. And uh, we already started, of course, a few years ago. So we're now in the Parsha of Bamidbar, and it's chapter four, and it's actually verse 14. That's how far we got. And right now, uh, we've dealt with the uh, arrangement of the tribes. We've dealt with the um, counting, the uh, census that was taken. That's the reason for the word numbers uh, to describe the book. And um, we are now, we had mentioned that the Levites, the tribe of Levi, was not counted amongst the other Israelites because their responsibility was the tabernacle. And there were three priestly family, of three Levitical families, and uh, they, the Gersh, Kat, Gershon, and Merari, and we are discussing the responsibilities of the family of Kahat, and I'm going to make the bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu v'asok p'yurei ora. So here we are. Uh, we're in the midst, as I said, of this discussion. And essentially what would happen is because uh, the family of Kahat were responsible for transporting the most sacred objects, uh, their, their, the way in which they had to do what they did was a little different. And what we're, dis what we're discussing now is how the Kohanim would come and cover up and basically put tarps over these various sacred objects like the ark or the showbread table, those items that were in the midst of that sanctuary. And then the uh, the family of Kahat would then come and transport it. And, and we'll see a more detail regarding this. So here we're talking about the responsibility of the Kohanim, the priests, to cover up the various elements that uh, made up the very holy objects. V'natnu alav, they shall place it upon it, et kol kelav. So this was uh, the altar, okay? Uh, we can go back and just double check on that and see. Here we are, okay. So here we're talking about the golden altar. This was the altar on which they, uh, let's make sure here, uh, that they offered up the incense. So this actually had several covers, right? Here is that they, this previous verse said how they cleaned the ashes on that altar and then they placed upon it a covering of, uh, of uh, purple. Okay. So they should place upon this altar all its vessels, Asher yishatu alav bahem it hamiz yishatu alav bahem, with which they would do service upon this altar, et hamachtot the fire pans, et hamizlagot the meat hooks. So that's interesting. So I must admit, they would not have put any any uh, animals on this altar at all. So I have to think that this is, okay, I know what we're talking about. Forgive me. All right. Uh, this is the regular Mizbeth. This verse is talking about the regular altar that was outside. And they had to remove the ashes of that a large altar that was outside the sanctuary. And, it's, and, and this is over which they put this. Right, and now it makes sense to say that they placed upon it all the various instruments that they used with which to uh, do service at the altar. Right, so the machtot, the fire pans, et hamizlagot, because certainly they offered up uh, meat on this altar. The meat hooks, the et hayaim, the scrapers, the et hamizrakot, and the basins in which they would receive the blood. Kol kle hamizbeach, all the vessels of this of the Mizbeach. So the the other altar on which they offered up only in, uh, incense was known as the Miz, 
Mizbach HaZahav. It was known as the golden altar because it was made out of gold. This altar was not made out of gold. It was made out of brass or copper uh, like over, over a wood interior. Ufarsu alav kisui or tahash. They should then spread over it a covering of a dolphin or, or tahash skin, however you want to translate this word tahash. Vesamu vadav and at that point, place its holes in it, into the altar. So, machtot. So, Rashi wants to translate or explain to us some of these various instruments because it's not clear, there's no context so much in which, other than to know that they were instruments by which they, or vessels that they used to uh, clean the altar or to service the altar, we don't have a, a more definite explanation, at least in the text itself. So he tells us, Machtot, these are the fire pans, Shebahen Hotin Gechalim the Trumat Hadeshen. So with, they use these to take out the coals uh, for the cleaning of the altar, the removal of the ashes. Asuya Kamin Machvat. So this was made it was in the shape of a pan, right? A, a, a flat pan. She'ein la ela shalosh mechitzot. But in this case, it had um, three, just three walls, if you can imagine, this uh, rectangular or square pan. And then coming up a, on the sides, on three of its sides were uh, walls, you might call it, or milfanecha, and the, there's no wall in the front, and at the front, shoevet et hagechalim, they would draw the coals by sticking it into the coals and taking them out that way. Mislagot are sinoriot, so these are hooks, shell nechoshet, that were made out of brass, shebahen nakin ba'evrahem, they would smack these into the uh, carcasses or the, the various parts of the animal, which were on the altar, in order to turn them over, so that they would be consumed by the fire quickly and, uh, and properly, thoroughly, or thoroughly and quickly. Ya'im, another vessel, Haim, Migrafot, these are shovels, uh, ovelas, vidal, that's simply the old French for a shovel. And here we are, ein shuffel, there's ein shuffel in the Yiddish. So shovel and shuffel, obviously related words. Vehen shel nechoshet, they were made out of brass. Ubahen mechabdin et adeshen, and with this, this they clean out the ashes, me'al hamisbeach. From the altar, from the altar. Next verse. Vechila Aharon Uvanav the Chasot et Hakodesh. And Aaron and his sons would then uh, finish up uh, from uh, covering the sacred vessels. Vet Kokle Hakodesh, and also the, so it was et Hakodesh, that is this, the sacred area. And clay hakodesh and all the vessels that were considered sanctified, being so when the camp would be on its way, for and after they had done this, yavo uvenei kahat, and then the sons of kahat would arrive laset to carry those vessels, for lo yigu el hakodesh, and but they shouldn't actually put their hands on these holy items. Vametu that they die, ela masav ne kahat ne ba'ohel moed, and this is the the porterage duties of the children of kahat regarding the ohel moed, the sanctuary, the portable sanctuary. Let's take a look at. Okay, um, don't think we have too much right. Lachasot et akodesh to cover the sanct the sacred. Elements. For, Rebbe, ha, yes. Hold on one sec. Just one sec. Uh, Levi sec. Got, Levi had three three sons. Yes. So and those three sons, uh, and their 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 people carried the. Uh, yes. Uh, right. Right. 
each son's family descendants had a specific element of the of the uh, Mishkan to carry. Okay. So they strong were unions. strong unions. Okay. So he's explaining the Kodesh, and he says that it is Ha'aron v'Hamizbeach. That is referring to the Aaron, the Ark of the Covenant, and the altar. And he says, <laughs> simply here, he says the altar, so we could assume it must be all the altars, both altars, I'm going to guess. Ve'et kol kle ha-kodesh, here we go. Uh, all the vessels of sanctity, a menorah, ukle sharet. This is referring to the menorah, the lamp uh, that was in the menorah that was in that holy place, the chle sharet, and all the vessels needed to, or utensils needed to service that menorah. So it says if they saw, if they touched the actual sanctified parts of our major, they would die. She'im yig'u, that is to say that if they actually touched one of these things, chayavim mitabi deshamayim, they would be punishable by death at the hands of heaven. That it's not something that would be meted out by a a regular human court. Rabbi, uh, yes. uh, there was a man. There was a man carrying the uh, mishka, and he it, it kind of tipped over, and he touched it, and he died. Mm -hmm. uh, Yusuf was his name. Yusuf or Yusuf something. So he was. yes. So that's he was right. He was carrying from the house. They, mm -hmm. they left at the house, and he was carrying it for David uh, to uh, bring to uh, uh, Jerusalem. Right. Right, so his name was Uza. This happened under King David, right? When David was trying to bring the ark to Jerusalem. And what happens is that you're right, absolutely. What happens was the oxen stumbled that were, were taking the cart uh, that was taking the ark to Jerusalem. And Uza stopped. He, apparently he was worried that the ark was going to fall off the cart or something like that. And he touched the ark. And yes, he was struck, struck dead, yes. This is in, in the book. I believe the book would be Second Samuel. Right. Yes. So there we actually have an example of what we're talking about here. Right. Uh, let's go on. Ufakudat Elazar ben Aharon HaKohen. And the responsibilities of Elazar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Shemen HaMaor. This was the oil for lighting, for, for illumination for lighting the menorah, and the incense, the uh, incense spices, and the mincha uh, that was brought every morning and every afternoon, and the anointing oil. Uh, also the responsibility for the entire mishkan, for the entire tabernacle, and all its contents, the Kodesh Uvachelav, regarding that which was Kodesh that was sanctified, and also the instruments that were also sanctified in that way. Let's take a look at Rashi. Uh, Ufkudat Elazar, right? So the responsibilities of Elazar. Shehu Memune Alehem, because he was appointed over them, La Sait Utam, to carry them. Shemen uktoret, the oil uktoret, and the in, in, the incense, the shemen hamishcha, and the anointing oil, the the umincha tatamid, so and the mincha meal offering, the perpetual meal offering, alav mutal, and it was all placed under his responsibility. Let's avot in order to command ulazarez, and that's to give encouragement. Or to offer up when they had to bring up those mandatory sacrifices when they were encamped. The Kudat Kol Hamishkan, so the responsibility of the entire Mishkan. The Od Haya Memune, and not only that, but Elazar was also uh, responsible, Al Masa B'nei Kahat, regarding the quarterage tasks of. The children of Kahat, let's avot to command ish ish kol avodato regarding every man uh, uh, at at his labor at his post. The almas etc. and his responsibilities. 
um, uh, right, for al masor and on his porterage tasks. For who hamishkan, and that is the mishkan, the tabernacle, the cholasherbo, and all that it, all its contents. Kol hasdurim lamala, everything that is mentioned above, up to this point in the numbers regarding this, the uh, parshazo regarding this particular parsha, aval masa bnei gershon umerari, but the uh, tasks of Gershon, the other two families of Gershon and Merari, She'enan uh, Mikodesh HaKodashim, they did not involve transporting the Holy of Holies, Al Pi Itamar Haya. It was uh, given at the directions of Itamar, his brother. Kamo Shekatu Veparshat Naso, as is written. In Parshat Naso, it's explicitly written in in the in the Torah here. So we're going to make this for today. Let me get the marking. Okay, let's see what I've got here. Okay, there we are. Okay, I'm going to stop the share. Okay, so it's a, a shorter lesson today, but uh, hopefully we're getting little by little, we're clarifying what's going on in this part of the Book of Numbers. And with this, I'm going to stop the recording.